Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Nothing catches God by surprise. God is in control. He doesn't need he doesn't need Alka Seltzer or doesn't need nerve pills. He's got it all in the control. About eleven years ago at our camp meeting, our governor came, William Jefferson Clinton, in Arkansas, where I live. We're so proud of our president and and uh, and uh, but our the governor came and he was in the he loves Pentecostal services. He don't he won't live like we live, but he likes to worship like we worship. But uh, there was a prophecy went forth over Bill Clinton and said, You're gonna be exalted to a high position in leadership. It's gonna be up to you whether you use that leadership for good or evil and in a Pentecostal service and another Pentecostal service at his second election a prophecy went forth and it said the second term is not going to be like the first term in office it's going to have a lot of trouble and then the prophecy went like this it said it's going to come out of the Oval Office and and uh, God knows the prophecy said there's going to be a blue dress involved and and uh there's several things like that warning. You see, this is serious business when it comes to living for God. It's not just not just shucking and jiving. It's serious business. <clears throat> Hermeneutics is, is, is the art of preaching. Apologetics is a form of preaching. Eschatology is in time preaching. But I just want to bypass all that tonight and just have Pentecostal preaching. See, there's a difference. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Acts, the seventh chapter. I'm going to read two portions of Scripture with you. Good to be back here. And I and, uh, heard so many comments, so many comments about the uh, way that everything was taken care of and set up and everything preceding their conference and... and uh, it's so wonderful. Hallelujah. Wish we could somehow cut Brother Elise's old picture out of that and just had Sister Melody's picture. It had been a lot better looking, wouldn't it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Just hoping he'll get that white sporker jacket out one way, one time this way. Yeah, hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to have fun this week. Tomorrow night, tomorrow night, I'm going to be preaching about the year of Jubilee. 1998 is the most awesome year we've ever lived in. This is a year of Jubilee. Hallelujah. 32 days from today, I'm taking about 75 people to Israel, and we're going to celebrate Jubilee in Jerusalem. And there are several things that happen on the year of Jubilee. Number one is you get uh, your inheritance back. Number two is you get a supernatural increase. Number three is you get out of debt. Uh, I'll just tell you how to get out of debt if you want me to. You need to, you need to have a plastectomy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Everybody look around and see if I said something bad or not. That means get your, get your plastic cut up. Hallelujah. So tomorrow night, preaching about what God... Listen, it's, it, it's, it's time to go to the enemy's camp and take back what belongs to us. Praise God. Acts 7, verse 15. So Jacob went down into Egypt and died. He and our fathers, and they were carried over into Shechem and laid in the sepulcher that Abraham brought for a sum of money of the sons of Amor. The father of Shechem. Now, everybody read the 17th verse with me. But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt. Then I want you to turn to Exodus, the first chapter with me. Exodus, the first chapter. Exodus, the first chapter. Everybody say, the closer they got to the redemption, the stronger they got. Hallelujah. I want to read this, and I want to start at the 
first verse. I know I'm reading several scriptures, but it won't hurt you to get too much scripture in you. Now, these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man and his household came with Jacob. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulon, Benjamin, uh, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were seventy souls, for Joseph was, not, was in Egypt already. And Joseph died and all his brethren and all that generation. And the children of Israel were what? Fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose up a new king which over Egypt which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of, of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join us also unto our enemies and fight against us. Now look at the seventh verse, or the twelfth verse. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, and they were grieved by the cause of the children of Israel. And I want to preach on what shall the end be. You may be seated. God bless you all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See all these these and thous and all these things in the Old Testament. It gives us a little peek into what's going on in the New Testament. So you don't need the National Enquirer or dial your favorite psychic. You need to see what the Word of God says. Somebody asked me, said, when do you think Jesus is coming? Well, I can't set the day near the hour, but it wouldn't surprise me. In fact, it'll surprise me if he don't come next year during the Feast of Rosh Hashanah. Hallelujah. Come on. You say, well, you don't know the day of the hour. It's on a lunar calendar. It's a different day and hour every year. But he's kept every one of the feasts. Hallelujah. In fact, last year we celebrated, I don't know what you celebrated, but I celebrated uh, Rosh Hashanah and then, and then Yom Kippur, the day of covering, the time of repentance. I repented. Hallelujah. Ask my wife to forgive me for being such a heathen. Hallelujah. Well, there's no way I can live good enough to suit her anyway. Hallelujah. But we're living in the time of the sound of the trumpet. April the 10th of 1998, for the first time since before the temple was destroyed in Jesus' hour, they offered the first animal sacrifice in Israel. Friend, this thing's over with, Bubba. If you're not ready to go now, you probably won't get ready. I told my wife today on the telephone, I said, I said, if I don't see you before Monday afternoon, I got to go to California next week, but I said, if I don't see you before Monday afternoon and Jesus comes back, just look inside the gate and wait for me. She said, how will I be able to find you? I said, just listen, mama. Hallelujah. Come on. The Bible tells us about all the things that's going to happen in the end time. No need of you getting uptight or getting nervous about what's going to happen. Just need to get in Jesus and, and, and groove with it. Hallelujah. See, the book, of, the, the, the book of Acts, the seventh chapter, says the closer they got to the promise, the stronger they got. And then in Exodus, the first chapter, said the closer they got to the promise, the stronger they got. They began to outnumber the Egyptians. Come on, they were, they, they were becoming stronger than what had them bound. They were being stronger than what had them hung up. Hallelujah. I want to rise up and tell you there's a power coming on this last day, church. And hell can't handle us. Hell can't stop us. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. <laughs> now, Exodus means going out in the Hebrew. And God showed Abraham 400 years prior to that. That his people was going to be a stranger in a land not their own. And he said, I'm going to judge that land. Listen, God's judging America. God is trying to shake America. You say, well, how? With floods and storms and earthquakes and AIDS and divorce and drugs. God's trying to shake this nation and say, wait a minute, there's something bigger than yourself. There's something bigger than being, than being introverted. You need to get a touch of God that makes you reach out. Fifty years ago, the number one magazine in the world was Life. Twenty-five years ago, the number one magazine was People. Today, they say the fastest growing magazine is Self. We're becoming ingrown, egocentric. But we've got to reach beyond ourselves. Come on, we've got to reach somebody before Jesus comes. I got news for you. Before we get out of here, we're going to be bad to the bubba bone. Hallelujah. Come on, the devil's afraid of us. The devil's about to have a nervous breakdown. The Bible said the devil believes in one God and trembles. He's about to have a nervous breakdown over this one God church. 
See, there's a spirit in these last days that, 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 that God's church is going to be great and do exploits. You know what? We're going to get to a place where we trust Him when we can't even trace Him. We're going to get to a place where we're not overcome by things we should have come over. The closer we get to the end time, the more the anointing is going to rest on us. I told Sister Tenny the other day, she called me on the telephone when we was talking about prayer in the hotel. And I said, Thetis, I'm going to tell you something. I said, we're praying a hole open in these heavens. Come on, we're going to be running and we're going to be having revival under an open sky. Come on, God's going to open up the heavens and everything that's hungry is going to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. I was in a service the other night in Memphis, Tennessee. And in 22 minutes, 124 people received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I was in a service the other night, and God put new eyeballs in a baby's head that was born without eyeballs. Hallelujah. What are you saying? I'm saying God's opening up the heavens, and God's going to do things for us like we've never seen. Now, here's the way, here's the, way the rabbis describe it. At the end of every age, at the end of every dispensation, it's like a candle. Just before the candle goes out, the candle flares brighter and hotter than it's ever been. It happened that way during the Maccabean. And I don't want to bore you with Israeli history. The Maccabean uh, revival, when they threw the people out of the temple and the oil burnt for eight days. That's where we get Hanukkah. Hallelujah. Italian people don't know nothing about that. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something I'm jazzed about. I met with the executive committee of the United Pentecostal Church, and they've given me permission to start a Jewish outreach into North America and the United States of America. We're going to reach God's chosen people in this end time. Come on. Hallelujah. See, let me tell you something. The darker it gets, the brighter a light shines. The darker it gets, the more distinction we have. The darker it gets, the more we're going to have uh, an outreach. Come on, I don't worry about sin. I worry about the brightness of Jesus. Hollywood can't stop us. Washington can't stop us. False cults can't stop us. Demons can't stop us. Every ball-headed, buck-toothed, knock-kneed, yellow-bellied, bow-legged, skin-backed devil in hell can't stop us. You know why? We're running in the wind. Hallelujah. There's an open sky, and God's given us revival. Everybody say, if my people which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. I'll hear from heaven. I'll heal their land. I'll heal their land. I'll heal their land. I'll heal their land. land. Listen, the coming out, the exodus, the coming out of Egypt is not a type of going to heaven. Some of the, some of the typologists and the people bogged down in eschatology has taught us that coming out of Egypt and the sojourn in the wilderness was a type of, of, of us going to heaven. I beg to differ with you. When I get to heaven, I'm not going to fight any more giants. Come on, it is not a type of going to heaven. Come on, it's a type of our walk on earth. God brings you out of Egypt. He baptizes you under the cloud. He baptizes you under Moses. Hallelujah. He takes you to the place of healing. He takes you to the place where He real builds your life. And it's a type of God's people walking with Him. Now listen to this. Now listen to this. They were, they were enslaved by something that they was growing stronger than what helped them. Come on. You're going to get stronger than the habit that's tried to bind you. You're going to get stronger than the little things you play out on the theater of your mind. You're going to get stronger than the little, than the little feelings you've got. You're going to get stronger than alcohol. You're going to get stronger than drugs. You're going to get stronger than lust. You're going to get stronger than a pack of cigarettes. You're going to get stronger than doing your own thing. (laughs) They were stronger than their captives. The closer we get to the promise, the more, the stronger we'll get. Turn to the one beside you and say, I'm bad to the bubba bone. Say, I'm stronger than the thing trying to hold me. I'm stronger than the thing that's tried to bind me. Say, the spirit that stopped me from shouting ain't stopping me no more. Say, the spirit that stopped me from fasting ain't stopping me no more. Say, the spirit that stopped me from dancing ain't stopping me no more. (laughs) 
Come on, hell's not mad about where you're at. Hell's mad about where you're going. Come on, you're not staying there anymore. You're coming out of where you've been. You're coming out of what's helped you. Hallelujah. 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 God speaks to me sometimes and it blows my mind. I was going out to preach it uh, two years ago at Landmark Conference, Stockton, California. One of the largest preaching conferences in the United Pentecostal Church. And uh, I was to preach the opening night. And I get, my wife takes me to the airport, I get on the airplane. And when I walk on the plane and sit down, I'd been down there Gentile and around trying to get on first class. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I've got enough frequent flyer miles that they, they move me up and I sit down and the, and, and when I sit down, God speaks to me and says, how come Hannah made a brand new coat for Samuel and brought it to the temple to him every year? It's what God asked me. God loves to bug me. God loves to ask me questions and tell me, report back to me in a few days, Bubba. So I sit down and, and the little stewardess comes by and she said, you want anything to drink? And I said, I want some, uh, decaf, low fat, uh, whatever you got. Hallelujah. And I'm sitting there and God speaks to me and said, how come Hannah makes a brand new coat for Samuel and brings it to the temple every year? See, in, Acts, er, er, in, in 1 Samuel, the uh, 2nd chapter, the 18th verse, Hannah wanted a baby so bad she folded up her face like a towel. Sister Elisio told me the other night, told us the other night, said, 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 we prayed and fasted our guts out. We want this so bad, it's killing us. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you the key to it. If God gives you this baby, if God gives you the revival you feel leaping in the womb of this church, are you willing to give it back to Him and don't say, it's Elisio's revival or Charlie's revival? Are you willing to give this baby to Him? I like what, I like, Buck Treadway, a friend of mine, you know Buck, and he, he, I was preaching for Buck Treadway in Beaumont, Texas, and he has a certain place he prays every morning. He was praying one morning, and the devil stepped up beside him and whispered in his ear, said, Buck Treadway, I'm getting ready to tear your church to pieces. And Buck jumped up, scared, of course, he said it was a horrible voice spoke right in his ear. Buck Treadway, I'm fixing to tear your church to pieces. He said, I jumped in my car, drove home, and when I got to my house, he said, my wife was standing on the front porch, and, when, and she said, Buck said, the devil's been here and told me he's fixing to tear your church to pieces. He said, I went back to the place I was praying and said, God, you've got to give me an answer. The devil says he's tearing my church to pieces. What shall I tell him? And God spoke to back to Brother Treadway and said, You tell the devil you don't have a church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You tell the devil you don't have a church. He's not messing with your church. He's messing with my church. Come on, this is not Glen Elysio's church. This is God's church. Come on, this is God's church. We're going to have this baby. I feel it leaping in the womb. I feel it prophesied over us. I felt it when I was here the last time. We're going to have this revival baby. Now listen to me. I spend half of my time. I spend half of my time on, on public transportation. And, and, and I never, if I ever die in a plane crash, you call him and say, Charlie was fasting when he went down. Because I always fast going to revival to open it up, and I always fast to close it up. Hallelujah. You tell we hadn't hurt ourselves fasting very much. Hallelujah. And if you're going to, if, if, if you're going to, some of the greatest blessings I've ever had has been on airplanes at midnight on the Red Eye Special. And if you're going to walk in this dimension, let me give you a little tip. You need to carry your trench coat. Because when you get in that camp meeting mode, you can go up under that trench coat and have camp meeting. Of course, they wonder what's going on. You in there jumping around that coat. You come out and your hair looks like you've kissed a light socket. Hallelujah. So I get off the airplane. I get off the airplane. They come with a van to pick us up. And Brother Tommy Kraft's there. And Brother Merle Ewing. Brother Jerry Jones is there. And we all get in the van. And, and uh, everybody wants me to entertain them. I wish to God somebody else would get a personality in this organization. Everybody wants me to entertain them. And, and, I'm, and, 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 and I'm trying to be effervescent and I'm trying to be cordial. But, but God said, how come Hannah made a brand new coat for Samuel and took it to the temple every year? I get on the platform. They're getting ready to introduce me. And I says, see how, 
God messes with me. I said, God, anoint me. He said, why do you want me to anoint you? And I said, well, because. He said, so everybody can listen to the tape and see the video and hear you preach and say, boy, you really preached. He said, if I do anoint you, it's not for you. It's to give away to somebody else. I said, God, you're God. I'm just a little weasel here. Just why ever? I don't care. I just need that anointing. Brother Kenneth Haney said, now, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Little Rock, Arkansas. Author, camp speaker, conference speaker, evangelist, director of prison ministries, Heisman Trophy winner. Hallelujah. Well, not really. I just got carried away for a minute there. Hallelujah. Ain't easy to get carried away on those introductions. Hallelujah. They're like perfume. It's okay if you don't swallow it. And God says, God says, Charlie... Why did Hannah make a brand new coat for Samuel and take it to the temple every year? I said, God, have you heard? They're introducing me. Now, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Little Rock. And God said, let me tell you why. God's so profound yet so simple. And, 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 and I was waiting for this great revelation. That I was going to write a book on it and, and try to get on the 700 Club and everything. You know, hallelujah. <laughs> and, God said, and God said, the reason Hannah made a brand new coat for Samuel is because he couldn't fit into the little coat that he wore the previous year. And I said, and. He said, that's it. Three days and, 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 and 3,000 miles, he's bugged me. And I said, say that again. He said, the reason Hannah made a brand new coat for Samuel every year because he couldn't fit in the little coat that he wore last year. Now, ladies and gentlemen, and God said, most of the people you have preached to tonight is able to fit into the same little relationship they had three years ago and four years ago and five years ago. Hallelujah. He said, now step to the pulpit and rip them out of those coats and give them a brand new coat to wear. Come on, we can't wear what we wore last year. Our shout when I was here last year is not a nut. We're in a brand new age and a brand new dispensation. Come on, we prayed the heavens open. We've stood on the mountaintops and the skyscrapers. And prayed revival open. We're going to be greater than anything that tries to bind us. Hallelujah. 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 You know the hotter leaven gets, the more it rises. The more you push and knead myrrh, the more it expands. Calamus, the more you step on it, the sweeter it gets. And the devil's tried everything in the book. Come on, the devil's tried everything in the book. And he hadn't been able to stop us. And you know what I feel? I told Brother Elisio when I was here last time, I said, man, you're sitting on the verge of an awesome revival. But I feel like we're a hundred miles close than anything we ever dreamed about or thought about. Come on. You know what the Bible said in the last days? Knowledge shall increase. The words knowledge there, if I was to, if I was to tell somebody, uh, that I know Glenn Elisio in Hebrew, it'd be, Ani yada Glenn Elisio. It's hard to make Elisio sound Hebrew. Sound like a mafia godfather, but not a, not a rabbi. Hallelujah. The word there is yada. Uh, ata yada. Ach. Mahanachain. That means you know Brother Mahaney. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word is yada. But when he says knowledge shall increase, the word is yodea. And it doesn't mean just a knowing. It's a knowing and a knowing. See, we're going to know more about prayer than we've ever known about prayer. I know more about prayer than I've ever known about prayer. Everything happened in the book of Acts either happened on the way to a prayer meeting or from a prayer meeting or during a prayer meeting. If you would take all the prayer out of the book of Acts, the church would shut down. But if you take all the prayer out of the United Pentecostal Church, we've got enough programs we could shuck and jive for two years. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know some things about prayer that I didn't used to know. See, they taught me to pray. The first thing you do is spend the first hour repenting. You go down there at the altar, stick your nose in the armpit, say, Good God, forgive me, and I've been a heathen, I've been no good. And uh, I was praying like that one day, and God spoke to me and said, Get up! Oh, God. He said, I said, Get up! Now, God tells you twice, you better pay attention. So I got up. And God says, How come you keep telling me you're no good? I said, But God, I'm no good. I'm dirty in a sack of wet dog hair. God, uh... <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
And, uh, and God said, when you tell me you're no good, you're telling me that Calvary wasn't strong enough to take care of anything you'll ever need. He said, you're as righteous as a man can be. He said, I don't see you like the world sees you. Come on, if I'd buy a perfect shirt, it'd be a shirt that never got dirty. It'd be a shirt you never had to, uh, what do you call it, iron. Hallelujah. I'm sorry, I don't iron, gentlemen. Hallelujah. My wife told me recently she'd like to go somewhere she's never been before, so I took her in the kitchen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A perfect shirt to me would be one that didn't get ring around the collar. <laughs> Hallelujah. A perfect shirt to me would be one with you could just leave the cufflinks right in. Halle- I got them there holiness cufflinks or cloth. Hallelujah. See, that'd be a perfect, but a perfect shirt to the manufacturer would be, be one if I took care of it. And, and the Bible says we're perfect. Did you know you're perfect in the eyes of God? Did you know you're perfect in the eyes of God? Come on, did you know you're perfect in the... That doesn't mean you never get soiled. That doesn't mean you mean you never make a mistake. That means that you have a revelation of the blood. Hallelujah. And no matter what happens, the blood's able to take care of you. No matter what you say, the blood's able to cleanse you. No matter what mistake you make, the blood's able to cleanse you. See, I told Brother Elicio, I said, we've got to have this just right. We've got to have a balance where the saints can be lifted this week. We've got to have a balance where the new people can be established. We've got to have a balance where the people that's not yet born can be born. And we've got to have the exact number God wants us to have. I said, I was driving through Phoenix, Arizona a few years ago, and I saw an orange tree, and, 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 and it was encumbered with fruit, and the limbs were almost breaking off. And finally, they told me they had to saw the orange tree down because it had more fruit than it could carry. Come on. We want exactly who God's got for us. We want exactly what God's got for us. Hallelujah. Come on. I want to have, I want the fire of God. Hallelujah. Come on. Prayer produces fire. You cannot pray and not have fire. Prayer produces fire. Hallelujah. God loves His children to get on fire. Come on. Worship produces fire. I'm going to tell you what we need. We need to have such a fire and such a touch of God that people can come in here and touch where God has touched. See, fire fire transforms solids into energy. You may be sitting there solid, not moving, but when the fire touches you, something's going to happen. Just tell God. Right now, tell God. Say, God, there's just a bunch I don't know. Well, there's a whole lot I don't know. I don't understand the second law of inertia. The third law of thermodynamics. I don't. I don't understand why they call it a a pair of pants and there's only one of them. Stationary and they send it away. Park on the driveway and drive on the parkway. Come on, why do they call them apartments and they're all stuck together? See, I can't explain natural things. I'll never understand why ladies shave their eyebrows off and draw them back on with a pencil, man. That, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't understand how this works. I don't understand how a guy can be a bartender and a week later be a one God, Jesus name, jumping up and down, running the aisle, Pentecostal. I don't understand how God can take a drug addict and change his life. Come on, I don't know how it works. I don't know how it works, Bubba. Hallelujah. I don't know how January the 16th, 1966, I walked into a church, a mop-headed hippie. I'd been in jail over 40 times, had been to prison twice, was a Satan worshiper, a drug addict, riding a Harley Davidson, smoking dope, helped my wife hostage the week before, and walk out of there born again a one God Jesus name, tongue-talking, holy rolling, out-running, bench-jumping Christian. (laughs) 
The thing about fire, anything around fire that's combustible is going to get on fire. Lay hands by the one beside you and say, get on fire tonight. Come on, let's get on fire tonight. This is a time for Greensboro to have their revival. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you know, do you know when Moses was born, when Moses was born, they were killing all the male babies. You know what they done? They stuck him in a little basket, shoved him into the Nile River, and Moses never cried until Ramsey's daughter opened up that basket and looked in his face. And God said, okay, turn it loose, Moshe. He cried and it touched her heart at a certain time. There's three taxes in Israel. The first tax, Mary was pregnant. The second tax, the child was too old. But the middle tax, the Bible said he was going to be born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem, the house of bread. Our bread out of the house of bread. And they had to go down there. And God moved on a reprobate. And God's got it all tied together. Think about this. See, the problem is not to try to figure out the plan. The problem is to get in on the plan. Isaiah 46 verse 9 is one of the most awesome scriptures in the Bible. It said, God declares the end from the beginning. See, if I'm going to tell you a story, I usually save... First chapter, second chapter, third chapter, fourth, and the last chapter. If I'm going to tell you a joke, I don't give you the punchline first. <laughs> if I'm going to tell you a joke here, Slick, I don't give you the punchline first. Hey, bro. You hear about the guy that... Hallelujah. Funniest one I've heard lately is the guy went to the ballet dance and is all running around on their tiptoes. He said, why didn't they just hire taller dancers? Hallelujah. <laughs> but it's more funny because you know the last of it, see? I'd say, Melody, you hear about ballet hiring taller dancers? So, but you know what God does? God gives us a punchline. God shows us what we're going to be. And then God begins to take us through the trials and through the desert, building the principles in us that make us what God says we are. Hallelujah. 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 God takes us through the desert. See, God says you're more than conquerors. Now, how can you be more than a conqueror? Everybody say, Brother Charlie, how can we be more than a conqueror? I'm glad you asked. Hallelujah. See, two boxers step into the ring. The winner gets, the loser gets $35 million. I'd fight them both at the same time, national television, for $30 million. Hallelujah. 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 Say, so you'd go on television, $30 million? Yes, I would. I was on TV a few years ago. I was in a debate with the rock group KISS. Me and Gene Simmons got into it. And, and uh, they had me on Entertainment Tonight. And I went on there and debated them. They said, are you against the music backwards? I said, I'm against it backwards, sideways, upside down. However you play it. When they tell our girls to give their bodies to their boyfriends and our boys to be queers. Hallelujah. <laughs> Somebody said, well, what did, the, what did the UPC think about you being on television? I said, how are they going to know? Hallelujah. Boy, this, this, this world champion we got now is Holy Ghost tongue talking. Yeah, he is. Evander, Ho boy, God's doing some weird things. MC Hammer goes to an apostolic church in Oakland. Hallelujah. Don't you know they got a kicking song service? Hallelujah. George Foreman goes to an apostolic church in Houston. How'd you like to argue a doctrine with him? Mike Tyson tells Evander Holyfield, I'm 
Zona não foi pio. And it's my God against your God. Said all is going to whip Jesus. So Evander comes out. He's got the Holy Ghost. He's coming out, running down the aisle, speaking in tongues as he comes out. We're living in a different day. I rode a few, about two years ago on a plane with a young man that plays for the Dallas Cowboys. And he was kind of smart mouth. I said, you need to get some respect in you, boy. I'm a man of God. And he said, I'm sorry, Reverend. And then found out later, when, I, when we come off the plane, they had all the news cameras and TV cameras, and I come off waving, and they was looking at him behind me. Hallelujah. <laughs> and, found out, and found out later that this gentleman went to a church called the Potter's House and got baptized in Jesus' name. And, and, and when uh, uh, T.D. Jake brought him up out of the water, he got the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues on national television. I forget his name, Dion something. Whatever. Hallelujah. I'm going to have you quote the twelve apostles here in a minute. Hallelujah. I sat down beside a lady on a plane the other day, and, uh, and I, I was in first class. I turned to her and I said, good morning. She said, are you a preacher? And I said, yes, sir. And she said, what kind? And I said, a humdinger, mama. And, and somebody stopped and asked her for her autograph. And I said, are you a singer? She said, no, I'm an actress. And I said, really? And she said, my name is Joyce DeWitt. And I started on Three's Company, a little dark-haired girl. And she said, how do I? I said, how do you know I was a Pentecostal preacher? She said, one of your preachers has been teaching me a home Bible study in my, in my home in Beverly Hills, California. And she's so excited about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I said, not one of our preachers. She said, yes, it is. It's Pastor John Stratton, San Bernardino, California. Come on, God's going to do some crazy things. Don't you be surprised if the richest man in this county gets the Holy Ghost this week or the biggest drug addict. Come on, God's going to do some wild things in this end time. God has kept us for this hour. God has kept us for this hour. And it's time for the church to cry. It's time for the church to worship. See, Satan's scared to death of us tonight. In Acts 1, now watch it, in Acts 1, here, here's the church. In Acts 1, they go to an upper room. In Acts 2, the Holy Ghost falls. In Acts 3, a lame man is healed. In Acts 4, they have a jailbreak. Hallelujah, and great grace is on them. In Acts 5, Ananias and Sapphira die because they lie to God, and there's great signs and wonders, and 5,000 receive the Holy Ghost. In Acts 6, deacons are added to the church, and they do miracles, signs, and wonders. In Acts 7, Stephen is stoned. In Acts 8, Philip becomes a hitchhiking evangelist. In Acts 9, Paul is converted. In Acts 10, they go to Cornelius' house. In Acts 11, they're called Christians. In Acts 12, Peter's arrested. In Acts 13, the Holy Spirit says, separate Paul and Barnabas. In Acts 14, a cripple's heal. In Acts 15, the tabernacle of David is restored. In Acts 16, they have a jailbreak at Philippi. In Acts 17, Paul preaches at Mars Hill. In Acts 18, the chief of the synagogue is converted. Come on! In Acts 19, he baptizes those people in Jesus' name. Acts 20, he gets a Macedonian call. Acts 21, they have a riot in the temple. Acts 22, he gives his testimony. Acts 23, they let him down in a basket. Acts 24, is at Caesarea in chains. Now that doesn't sound like the pale, palsied, powerless, plastic, pathetic churches of today. See, God's ready to do something. God's ready to do something. Do you know what? Last year in one service in Ethiopia, last year in one service in Ethiopia, 117,000 received the Holy Ghost. Well, I don't believe that many got it. Well, that's why God kept you away from there. And you know what Brother Marion tells us? That Brother Marion, when I see him, he's the, he's the uh, superintendent of Ethiopia. Because the Ethiopian language and the Hebrew language are both Semitic. And I can talk to him by speaking in Hebrew, and he can understand me in Ethiopian. Hallelujah. And 
And, and, and he said, what? we don't pray for revival. You know what we pray for? We pray for uni uh, unity and oneness. And if the church can get where she needs to be in revival, if the church can ever love each other and move into this dimension where somebody's not jealous, hallelujah. I feel a oneness in this place, Pastor. I feel a oneness in this place. How I'm going to do it. See, if I was going to fight somebody, I really was sweating. And I can't see anybody here, I'd really sweat in a good rumble. But if I was going to fight somebody... I'm not saying you couldn't whip me. I'm just saying I wouldn't sweat it. I'd take a... Three of us drug addicts were going to fight a football team one night. They come running at us. One looked at me and the other. And he said, I've never run from a fight in my life. And I said, me either. He said, say the word and we're out here. I said, let's get it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them, baby. Hallelujah. Didn't a redneck sing something about that? But if I was going to fight, if I was going to fight somebody and, and, and I was worrying a little bit, when I was in the world, I used a pair of brass knuckles. And now I'm in the church. I got an action 238s. Hallelujah. I wouldn't tell them. I, see, I always, I always kept a kicker. And, and, but you know what? God's just open. God said, all right, you mess with my kids. Adam, you become dust. Satan, you got a right to eat the dust. Everything not covered by the blood, Satan's got a right to gnaw on. See? That part you got stuck off under the blood, Satan got a right to be on that and give you torment. And he said, Satan, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to whip you. Here's the way I'm going to whip you. I'm going to do that through the seed of a woman. And every time a baby would cry, a Jewish baby, Satan would jump. That's why, he's, that's why he was killing all the babies. Come on. The first promise he ever gave in the Bible was to Satan, I'm going to whip you. I'm going to overhaul your motor. I'm going to hit you so hard when you wake up, your clothes will be out of style. Come on. Hallelujah. Somebody asked me, said, what would you do if you was walking down? The I don't believe in fighting. Christians don't fight. Somebody said, what would you do if you was walking down the street and a bunch of thugs grabbed Sister Mahaney and went to trying to drag her off or something? I said, well, they're not going to do that. He said, just hypothetic, hypothetical, hypothetical. I said, this is hypothetical. He said, hypothetical. If you was walking down the street and some thugs grabbed Sister Mahaney was going to drag her off, what would you do? I said, I'd call down fire and burn them up. He said, how could you do that? And I said, it's hypothetical. Hallelujah. <laughs> Listen to me. Satan knows this thing is just about over, and he's tearing and foaming. Two words for dominion in the Bible. Everything that naturally submits is going to submit, and that's called chabed. And then there's another word, things that don't want to submit, has to submit because of power. That's kabosh. My Jewish grandma used to say, I'm going to put the kabosh on you, Charlie. She'd say, come here already, you little shlemiel. Nobody chew you out like a Jewish grandma. All righty, come here, you little Weisenheimer. I'm going to put the kabosh on you. And the word kabosh comes from the word carpet. That means she was going to put me under her foot. Apply the board of education to the seat of correction. Ain't it funny how you hit a kid back here and he thinks differently up here? I don't believe in that. That's why I've got a prison ministry. See, we've almost every major of newspaper magazine has the horoscope. I was with a preacher the other day and he said, Well, I've got to go back. I forgot my rabbit's foot. I said, it didn't help the rabbit much. <laughs> Horoscopes. One of the signs is the bull. That's what it sounds like to me, too. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> See, the enemy, the enemy has... You know what? There was four things in hell that every church needs. 
When the rich man lifted up his eyes in torment, there was four things in hell every church needs. He, was, he cried. Every church needs some weeping over the lost. Come on. And he said, give me mercy. Every church needs mercy. Hallelujah. And he prayed for his loved ones that wasn't there yet. And then he got a missionary vision. Hallelujah. There's four things in hell that every one of us need. And I'm going to tell you, we're moving into a time. If I was a devil and wanted to stop this church this week, you know what I'd do? I'd stop your worship. I'd say, now listen. Let me, let me explain something to you, Alicio. We're going to have people coming in here. God only knows who will be in here this week. What are you going to do if they come in everybody running around the aisles look like a track meet? Jumping up and down. Everybody got their arms stuck up, look like a mass hold up. Sister Alicia, oh, you're the musician up here. You sweet, pretty little thing. You're not supposed to be dancing around. You're supposed to stay there on the instrument. How come you guys can't stay sit down? See? See? Don't you ask me, buddy. Keep that hand down. The devil, devil don't want us acting like this. Come on. Come on, let's be quiet. Let's be dignified. Hallelujah. Come on, they've been to churches like that. Come on, they've already been to that church. They've already been to the dignified church. You know what they're hungry for? They're hungry for a church that the flame is burning on them. They're hungry for a church that's on fire. Let me close this way. Let me close this way. If the musicians would come while I'm making these few final statements. In November, they've asked me to write an article for our national magazine, the Pentecostal Herald, on the real revival churches. There's four criteria that make all the revival churches unique to each other. Four. Number one is they're praying churches. Five, rather. Five, five. Excuse me, five. Number one is they're praying churches. Number two is they're worshiping churches. Number three is they're conservative churches. Come on. Number four is they're giving churches. Now here's number five is they're multicultural churches. You say, well, what is multicultural, Brother Mahaney? My grandmother was Jewish. My grandfather was Choctaw Indian. That's multicultural, baby. (laughs) Did you know that when Jesus carried the cross, the first person the blood of the cross ever touched was a black man? Did you know the anti... God never let them be called Christians at second chapter of the book of Acts where you shouted. How many shouted over the second chapter of the book of Acts? You shouted over that. Do you know that's for Jews? You know, that, 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 there wasn't a Goy, there wasn't a Gentile there. So when you shout over that next time, Sam, shout for Brother Mahaney and his people. <laughs> Cornelius' house. Cornelius' house. They didn't call them Christians there. But when they came to Antioch and become a multicultural church. See, that's why God entered into Abraham with a blood covenant and not a skin covenant. How many ever read about John the Revelator on the Isle of Patmos? John the Revelator. That was the Alcatraz of his day. That was a maximum security prison of the Roman Empire. And you know what his bars were? It was the Mediterranean Sea. You know what his guards were? The Mediterranean Sea. Come on. That was his guards, his bars was the Mediterranean Sea. And John would walk down there to sea, and he'd think, somewhere in the world, my brethren are shouting, having revival, having fellowship. And I'm locked up here, and the thing that keeps me locked in is this Mediterranean Sea. And God spoke to John and said, John, when you get to heaven, Bubba, there's not going to be any more sea. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. (laughs) 
if you would run everybody's name into a computer and find the guy least likely, least qualified to be preaching in a Wednesday night after conference crusade. I mean, run it through everybody you know and find the guy least likely and the least qualified. It'd be me right here. But when you give your life to God and say, God, I submit. I love you. I love you. Come and lift your hands and say, God, make me one with what you're doing in the body of Christ. Here's the way I think we ought to close it tonight. We'll do it differently every night, but here's the way I think we ought to close it tonight. I want all the gentlemen in the church, all the men, I don't care what where you're at spiritually, I want all the men to come to my right and all the ladies to come to my left. Quickly. Come on, gentlemen. Over to my right. All the sisters to my left. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Everybody say Thursday night. The year of Jubilee. Jubilee. Say we're going to Shabbat tomorrow night. Shabbat tomorrow night. I'm going to have a Shabbat revival one of these days where we just dance and shout. All right. See, the key is not to find some. Brother Alicio is a, I don't know, I don't like to admit this. I hate to admit it, but he's a great preacher. Yeah. Uh, and, and. I've got three or four friends. I've got Brother Alicio, Brother Rex Johnson, Brother Tom Fred Tenney. And three or four friends. When we're together all the time, we're always throwing messages and preaching to each other. And uh, the key is not to get a greater message in some tricky text in the head and sermon. That's not the key. The key is if we could ever get in the oneness of the body. If we could ever get the oneness of the body like we've got the oneness of God. And we're going to start this week with in a oneness. In a oneness. In a oneness. See, we're all different. We're all different. We're all different. Every one of us, you can, you, every one of us, our portfolio is different. How many here was raised in the country? You was raised in the country on a farm. I never lived on a farm. Well, I've lived on farms, but different kind of farms than you people lived on. I mean, when you were growing up, you celebrated Christmas. And we hung our socks up one year and woke up the next morning. We saw the little Gentile kids hanging their socks up. Mama was in there washing our socks. We, we didn't celebrate Christmas. I still have a hard time with all that. Taking your kids out to the mall and sticking them on some perverse lap because they got a red suit on. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. How many was raised rich? A lot of money. All the money you ever needed. Good God. How many was raised poor? See, it was all... Every one of us is different. How many has a weight problem in here? You got to just... I don't have a weight problem. Somebody asked me the other day, said, when you went to school, did you have a hard time with the questions that the teacher asked? And I said, no. It was the answers. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> See, we're all different. We're all different. We're all different. But God takes all this plethora and all this multiplicity of differences, and God blends them together and makes the body of Christ the most powerful thing in this earth. Hallelujah. When people come in here this week, they're going to come in here because they heard they could get the answer to what they needed in Pentecost. Here's the way I want to close this service tonight. I want all you sisters just to take hands and four, five, or seven in a circle. I want you to make circles. Just take take hands and make circles. When you get that circle made, I want two to step into the circle. I don't want six in a circle. I want four, five, seven, but I don't want six. We got too big a circle here. Let's make two circles right here. Two circles right here. There you go. 
I want two to step in the circle. Everybody lay hands on them and say, God, I want you to bless my sister. Say, I'm not being egocentric now, God. I'm not worrying about a blessing for me. I want you to put a blessing on my sister like she's never had. Come on, two, get in the middle of the circle. Two, step into the middle of the circle and everybody pray for them. I want you to bless my sister like she's never had. You gentlemen do the same thing. Come on, make circles over here. Something happens when somebody in the body of Christ lays hands on you. Come on, something's happening, sister, right now. Something's happening in your life. Come on, you're being joined and you're being meshed and you're being hooked into a kingdom that's bigger than anything you've ever been a part of. It's bigger than the government. It's bigger than a union. It's bigger than a family. Come on, lay hands on Come on, lay hands on. They may be a stranger one time, but when they walk in these doors and they obey the gospel, they become part of a family. Come on. I'm part of the same family Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses. Come on, David. Peter, Andrew, James, John. Come on. Come on, I want everybody prayed for. I want everybody ministered to. Two more get in the circle. Come on. Something's following you. When you lay hands...